Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Wednesday, June 23rd, 2021. I'm Andrew Hansen alongside Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach. And as we introduce the Eastern Conference Finals tonight, Coach, we're coming in off a strong night. Three for three on FanDuel with all, all of our lineups. Do you think we can do it again tonight? I sure hope so, man. I It was fun watching that last game, you know, with campaign, you know, as a captain on the one team and just having all our guys come through and uh, I just was thrilled that I didn't have a guy in my stinking lineup that stunk you know it seems like you always get that one straggler that's not getting it done but uh, man it was crazy game uh, bizarre finish but uh, we we hit it all so we're going for a back-to-back uh, sweep here let's get it done Okay, let's get it done. Yeah, so we're going to start the Eastern Conference Finals tonight. Atlanta and Milwaukee, both coming off emotional finishes oh, to man. get there. Um, Atlanta over Philly on the road in Game 7. Milwaukee with that crazy overtime game against Brooklyn. And in the regular season, these teams played three times. Milwaukee won twice. Um each game was a little bit different with who was out there. So we'll touch on that a little bit as we go. But we also have to figure out who's going to be out there tonight, Coach. So do you want to start off on the Atlanta side and, and sort through that for us? Sure, absolutely. A, a, a little groundwork here, too, on this game. It's an 8.30 Eastern start. So it gives everybody a chance to to tune in. I like that, that time frame of starts. Um, Atlanta clinched on Sunday and Milwaukee on Saturday. So an extra day's rest for Milwaukee can't hurt. But like you said, you know, usually coming into a series like this, considering the two series they just played, you know, when a team is stretched to the limit in seven, is just gassed, and then the other team comes in after winning in five or whatever, it's usually a big edge. But as you mentioned, both teams just crazy seven-game intense series so that evens the playing field as far as coming in uh you know as far as just freshness um but i guess a slight edge to milwaukee because atlanta is a little more dinged up uh kevin herter is probable you know coming off the game of his life he's certainly going to play uh the two big question marks though for atlanta especially the one uh the smaller question mark is reddish who's been a good help for them and and played some different games that really made a difference this season. But he's been hurt a lot lately, and he's questionable for this game. So we want to get that news because it will affect the rotation in the minutes. And then the big news, uh, Bogdanovich, uh, your your client there, <laughs> Mr. Bo- <laughs> Mr. Bogey's questionable. He's been having a knee problem uh, throughout this last series, and it, it got the worst it was. Uh, in that game seven, he was actually pulled, didn't play down the stretch, only got 21 minutes and eight shots up. So that's a key factor for Atlanta. There's no question about it because he's been a solid second scorer to Trey Young uh, throughout the second half of the season and into the playoffs. So very important to watch the news. It will have a domino effect on uh, this Atlanta side of, of who we're rostering for sure. Um, Milwaukee's a seven and a half point favorite in this game, Andrew. Is that, I thought that was a little high. Yeah, it, 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 when I first looked at it, it did seem a little bit high, but with Bogdanovich limited, um, you know, Milwaukee at home, I, I think it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm tempted to take the points there. I was thinking like five and a half, but seven and a half is a pretty healthy number. It's a 226 over under, so those that's been pretty much the theme uh, in the Eastern Conference, right in that mid 220. So similar situation there. So let's talk about what we expect here and what the matchups are going to bring, because obviously it's game one, and we know what they've done in these last series, but as we we know you know, the whole series shifts, you know, based on who's going to play, what's needed. I mean, we talked about yesterday, Andrew, and I was really pleased it panned out that way. But, you know, we talked in depth on here that they just had trouble guarding Aiden as, you know, as far as, uh, you know, the Clippers, because he's just too big, too strong. 
So we anticipated, you know, it's going to give a big bump to Zubac, which it did because they had to put a big body on them, whereas they didn't need Zubac in the series prior because of the, the teams didn't have an interior threat offensively. So, you know, we're expecting some changes here as well. And here's the biggest change I want to mention right off the bat, because I know Trey Young has been just absolutely out of this world, except for that last game, five for 23, which is rough. I don't know how they win the game with him five for 23. I would I would have bet a lot of money if that were his numbers, that it would not uh, end well for Atlanta, but they they pulled it out. So, you know, the question is, how much of a presence is Trey going to have and how how well is he going to do? Well, we know he's going to play huge minutes, but I truly respect Drew Holiday on another level defensively. Um, ben Simmons is fantastic as well, and that's the last matchup, but he's a different kind of defender. Ben is 6'11", I believe. Uh, they had him at 6'10", but I think he's actually 6'11". So he can guard, you know, he's like outstanding on some of the perimeter guys that are long, like like Paul George, for example, and those kind of guys. But really the kind of guy to stop Trey needs to be a little bit, sh- sh- not shorter, but in stature where there's more balance, they can move quicker, and they have a great defensive pedigree. I mean, I don't know who, uh, what other guard in the league you could ask for much more than as a perfect matchup to defend Trey as uh, other than Drew Holiday. I mean, he's got all those attributes I mentioned. I think this is just going to be very difficult for Trey. And I think Vegas, as you see in this the series odds, Milwaukee's a, a huge favorite, which, again, seemed sort of off kilter. But when you really look at the fact that Trey is by far their biggest usage, biggest score, biggest everything – uh, and he's going to be locked down to some extent as much as can be expected by Drew Holiday. I think that is a spot that I'm going to uh, avoid. So I'm going to avoid Trey until he proves to me that he can smoke Drew Holiday, which in, it might take you know, a while. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the thing is, Drew's had a good history against him and he has a great history Uh, you know, defensively, he's made all NBA defensive teams. So there's my big first thing, Andrew. That's my thinking on why I want to fade Trey. Yeah, and Coach, Uh, let me me add something there. Absolutely. In these regular season matchups, they played three times. Trey Young only played once, and it did not go well for him. He played 37 Mm -hmm. minutes. He went three for 17 from the field, finished Mm -hmm. 15, two, and nine. So he just did not hit value whatsoever with Drew Holiday locking him up, as you described. And, you know, on top of that, you have two other situations here. Trey Young is coming off two incredibly emotional series. The These last two series that they won uh, against Philly and the Knicks, if you remember, and we've talked about it multiple times, both crowds were chanting, you know, the Knicks with their FU, Trey, and, you know, and they were all trying to get under – Trey skin and man, he just stuck it to him. But you know, all of that emotion, all of that intensity, it takes a toll. And you got to remember, he's this is his first run in the playoffs. So you've got an inexperienced playoff guy that has to be somewhat gassed, at least emotionally. And now he's playing one of the best on the ball perimeter point guard defenders in the league. So that that's my whole theory here is try to find the Atlanta players that are going to be able to pick them up and get it done. And then on top of that, I want to, I'm going to put a few lineups together, which in these showdown slates, man, you know, I know I ride and die with one uh, lineup all the time, but you really can't in these showdown slates because there's no room for error or mediocrity. You have to hit the nuts. So, you know, I'll probably build three lineups and one of the lineups and I wanted to see what you thought about this, Andrew. But it's a game script scenario. Is I'm actually going to put like two bench guys from Milwaukee in, thinking that they may win this game by double digits and get some extra run for like Forbes or Portis or guys like that. Is that too much of a stretch? No, I don't think so. I think definitely one Milwaukee guy would come into play. And you could 
on FanDuel, for example, use four Milwaukee guys, only one Atlanta. Uh, and I think evaluating that Milwaukee bench is going to be huge because right. they're not going to play those minutes they played in Game 7 against Brooklyn. No. Uh, 52 for Middleton, 50 <laughs> for Giannis, 48 for Drew Holiday, 46 for Lopez. That was such an outlier for Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, and so I agree. I think uh, that's that's going to change a lot and and uh, change the values here as we start this new series. It is. And, you know, the other thing that, that flips the script, I, I know it happens all the time. I'm hoping other DFS players forget, you know, but whenever a series starts over again and it's 0-0 zero, zero, and you just came out of a series where, you know, you faced single elimination and you had to play your guys tons of minutes, there's always a reset by the coach saying, okay, we're zero zero. This could be seven games again. We have to pace ourselves a little bit. Let's get some bench minutes. Let's get everybody a touch, get everybody a shot. So I think you're going to see more bench from these two teams. I know you are. There's just no way they're playing the, like you said, monster minutes. They're going to get some minutes off the bench. You know, Herter 40, Collins 41, Capello 33, which is realistic. Young 43. I think you'll see top minutes from the Atlanta guys, 38-ish kind of thing. So those two or three minutes that you're pulling away are going to go to guys like Lou Williams. Uh, they're going to go to guys like a Kongwu. And then, of course, if Reddish plays, he'll get in that mix uh, as well. So let's, you know, you can't totally jump ship and play those guys, but just know that when you're playing these key guys for each team, that you can expect their minutes to be pared down just a little bit from what they did in the last game. So let me tell you who I like from Atlanta at this point. I think Kevin Herter, obviously on a high, obviously going to be popular at his price with the minutes and his performance. He really did win that game for him. So uh, I think he's extremely playable again. I mean, the the question will be, though, you know, if, if Reddish and Bogdanovich are going to play with no restrictions – that will definitely, especially Bogdanovich, take some of those shots and usage away from Herder. So I need that news. But if those guys are limited at all, Herder's automatic in my lineup. Um, again, I'm fading young. I, You know, I, you're going to find this one hard to believe, too. But I sort of like Clint Capella a little bit. And here's my reason behind it. He's, he didn't have a great series because... You know, the, the matchup was just totally different. I mean, you have Joel Embiid, who just made him look like a little JV player sometimes. He did. He just owned He him. really just beat him up. And, you know, he's Capella's not used to that. There's not too many guys, maybe two or three in the league, that can do that to him, if that. But now it's a completely new ball game. Now you've got Capella, who, if he's guarding Lopez, Lopez is going to stand out at the three-point line, you know, try to pull him out from there. And then he's just he's going to be the the help guy at the rim to try to you know block some shots and get some rebounds when Giannis penetrates. So I think it brings Capella more into play. I think they need him on the floor more because if you don't have any interior defense with Giannis, you're dead. And he is a terrific interior defender. You know the the question will be that we have to watch, and I'm willing to take that gamble in game one. I think he can show enough uh, defensively, you know, to keep Bogdanovich in check from three, and he, he'll probably get two or three threes. But I think you sacrifice that and those attempts to to at least try to slow down Giannis. So I so Capella's in play for me. You know, that last game I think will sour people because again, only eight shots went up. He did have 13 real points, but only six rebounds. This, I think you get back to the 12, 14 rebound Capella in this game. And Milwaukee plays fast and they transition. And as long as he stays out of foul trouble, I think Capella is a good sneaky play uh, that will make it into my lineups. Uh, if Bogdanovich is going to be without restrictions, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to consider him. Again, those shots, if Young's getting locked down at all by holiday, have to go somewhere. And I'm, I know Atlanta would prefer it's Bogdanovich shooting him because he's just a dead eye from three, but he's got to be healthy to do it. If he's like game time decision, 
really shaky, not, you know, they're not sure how many minutes, then you, you can't play him. I mean, he was two for eight with 0 for four from three. But if he's a go and feeling good after a couple days rest, you know, then you, you dial him up from there. Uh, the only bench guys that I'm thinking about, Andrew, uh, Din, uh, Gallinari's been my steady guy that I've played almost every game in this last series. Um, not completely sure that that's a, a direction I'm going to go. But if he did get 30 minutes in that last game, he's gotten mid-20s minutes plus, and he, he can get hot, and he's been rebounding well, better than he usually does. So as a value guy, you could go there. Um, and then depending, again, on the, the uh, Bogdanovich and Reddish news, uh, Lou Williams at least is going to get a peak for me. Because if we can get 20 minutes out of Lou, you're in good shape. Again, only 12 minutes, 11, 11 minutes, 19 seconds the last game, mid-teens before that, which you can't really risk in showdown. But let's get that news to make sure that he's not a viable uh, pivot. But that's that's how I see Atlanta right now. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll catch that news. Jump with us in Discord. Uh, become a member, dfscoachtalk.com. We have all kinds of great memberships, even as little as the three day for ten bucks, because that's where you'll see when we make these adjustments. We'll get the news on, you know, confirmation on Herder, and then the news on Reddish and Bogdanovich, and adjust accordingly uh, with our members in Discord. So, all right, man, it's all yours. Yeah, so I'm pretty similar on Atlanta. Uh, Trey Young, um, for the reasons we've mentioned, I don't think I'm going to play him in my hybrid lineup, my my cash lineup. He's on FanDuel. There's a chance he'll sneak in on the GPP, you know, with five guys, with some of the pricing, with some of these bench guys. We're going to talk about more. You can make it work if you if you fade one of the big three guys on on Milwaukee. But you know, DraftKings, I'm I'm primarily planning to fade him. You know, if Bogdanovich sits, then it could change a little bit. And what a domino right. effect he really is, because he really is if he's out or limited, then Trey Young will get a few more shots. Herter certainly benefits, and Gallinari gets a big bump. Not to mm -hmm. mention, you know, Reddish, if all of a sudden he's playing half the game. So Bogdanovich, very, very crucial. Um, Herter, I agree, um, you know, game of his life, but nice price on both sides. Re right. Really mid-tier, and you feel good about, about the usage for him. Uh, Capella, you mentioned his rebounds. He has had 16 and 14 against Milwaukee in the two times he's played during yes. the regular season. So he's he's definitely playable from my perspective as well. Um, Lou Williams, I, I'll also take a peek at him, and and Gallinari, like I said. So that's that's the core really that I'm looking at. Collins also in play uh, if you want to go with more of a, a mid build. So. Um, even though I like Milwaukee here more in general, um, you, you obviously have to get at least one Atlanta guy out there, and, and there's a chance I'll have two. Um, but I still am going to lean a little bit more towards Milwaukee here. So let's let's turn the page and look at this group. Okay. Um, you know the the big minutes here that that will change as we discussed. Uh, that's what Bud wants. And the only reason he went that heavy was because the season was on the line. Perhaps even his job was on the line. So yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah. So it'll be more balanced here tonight. The, the bench guys will get some more minutes. But with the starters, uh, Drew Holiday gets that awesome matchup. And we know he's going to be expending a lot of energy trying to defend Trey Young. But offensively, uh, the one time that they matched up, he did quite well. I think 23-4-7 and seven is what I have written down. Yeah, yes. he's a fair price. Uh, Giannis certainly in play, probably going to be in my lineups. Um, expensive on DraftKings, but um, you know, I I think um, I think he's going to do. You know, the volume will be there, even if Capella gives him some trouble at the rim. Uh, I think Giannis makes the lineup. Middleton is the is the X factor for me on Milwaukee. Uh, his price is up a little bit. He hasn't done great against Atlanta. Yes, in the first game, they had DeAndre Hunter defending him on the other side. Um, and in the second and third games when they played, it was a back-to-back -back for Milwaukee both times. And we know that that 
drastically limits their minutes when that happens. Um, so you kind of you kind of throw those numbers out out the window a little bit. Um, but if Reddish is going to be out there for some of the time, he can give him some trouble. And, you know, it's just a, a, a big sacrifice you have to make if you want to play Holiday and Giannis to get Middleton in there. What does that do to the rest of your lineup? So he's playable mm-hmm. for me. But right now, if I'm going to fade one of the big three, that's what I'm planning to do. Middleton? Middleton, yep. Okay. Uh, probably won't go to P.J. Tucker or or Lopez in this game because of salary and and lineup construction. But I will look at this Milwaukee bench a little bit. And Bobby Portis is the one guy that I'm really evaluating here because he disappeared in that last series. Uh, Didn't even play in the last game. He didn't disappear off my roster two times. (laughs) (laughs) But in this matchup in the regular season, he played 27, 22, and 22 minutes. Yeah. Uh, his numbers were solid. How about 21 and 6 in the first I game? Know. Then he got 11 and 7, 10 and 5, which if you get Don't 10 get me and... started on Portis or I, <laughs> I may swear. <laughs> I mean if you get 10 and 5 out of Portis, it doesn't sound great, but at his price, I mean 2400 on DraftKings, only 7000 sure. on FanDuel, he lets you get a lot of stuff done and it's hard to push that button when he didn't play. But First game of the series, he's had success against these guys. Coach Bud wants to use the bench. I mean, what are the chances, Coach, that he doesn't play tonight? You know, I you're asking the wrong guy. I mean, I played him twice because I think he's a, a key guy off the bench for them. And I, you know, I agree he should get some minutes, but I don't I don't have the courage to pull the trigger a third time and take that chance. I need to see him get some minutes, unfortunately. I mean, you can only take so many shots, you know? And uh, I just, I'm probably not going to go there, Andrew, because of, you know, biting the bullet on two pretty much goose eggs. But I, I do agree with you. I think he should be part of that rotation. You know, it, it's it's shocking to me with what he's his output has been that you don't play the guy 15 minutes. It's just stunning to me. Yeah, but, I think he will. I think he'll play. I hope 12 you're right. To 18 minutes. Um, so I think he's he's a guy you, you want to consider. Connaughton, always a, a consideration here. He's the most locked in for minutes. We saw that in Game 7. He got 23. Forbes only got 5. He provides a lot of versatility with his offensive ability and his size, getting stocks and rebounds. So he'll, he'll be yeah. out there. Um, and uh, Forbes uh, probably won't make it for me. I'd rather pay up a little bit for Connaughton or Portis off of that bench. All right. Um, for me, it's pretty simple. I mean, you can look at this last game. They only played six guys, in essence, is really what they did. Connaughton's the only guy that got any minutes off the bench of any semblance. Uh, and other than that, they played their main guys. But again, with the reset, game one, uh, I agree with you 100%. I think you're going to see some some Forbes some Portis, a little more Connaughton, uh, maybe even, a, you know, eight, ten minutes from Thanasis. Uh, it's possible. So with that in mind, there, there are two builds that I have that I'm looking at. You know, one where I use Giannis and uh, Middleton. But then if you do that, you know, I mean, you can make it work if you're sitting Trey, uh, but it's tough. I mean, that's where you're going to have to use some bench guys and hope they really produce. So that's the one build that I'll look at. And then the second build I'm, I, I want to take a stab with here, I know it's not going to be popular again, but that's fine too, is if I sit Giannis, it does open up the world to you. You can play Middleton and Holiday, and then with still sitting young, you have you can fill out with guys that you know are going to play solid minutes. And there's something to be said about that. I mean, last night, uh, you know, all my five guys that that cashed so high, they played 30 plus minutes and just those minutes, you know, they produced. And it's like I say, it's been avoid the guy, the Connaughton or the Forbes or the Portis or all these guys we keep mentioning. The potential there for a zero, there's a potential there for a single digit guy. And, you know, you're, you're sunk. So, it, you know, these showdown slates are totally different strategy than 
like today, you know, I'm building a baseball uh, with a 14 game slate. I'm building a baseball roster. I mean, that's how, you know, we're used to looking and building lineups, not quite 14 all the time, but you can put your value in there. You can take a shot here. You can balance it out. But on these showdown slates, you've got to get, you got to hit it. And so, you know, I want a couple of different exposures to, that I have. One to be stacked up with the Giannis Middleton and the other one to be uh, a little bit more medium based with Middleton and Holiday. And the reason I'm so high on Middleton, uh, you hit the, the nail right on the head in your your description. First of all, Middleton is shooting the ball more than Giannis. Look at the last series. Almost every game, he's shooting a 23, 26, 28 times. And he's even more than Giannis. And he is their go-to guy, even down the stretch, because Giannis is so poor at the foul line, and Middleton is phenomenal at the foul line. So they figure if he doesn't get the shot up, he gets fouled. You know, you got a whole different situation there. So I love Middleton, and the fact that he was guarded by one of, of the top five perimeter defenders, in my opinion, as a young guy, DeAndre Hunter is an absolute hawk. He was like that in college. He's now done that in the pros, very well respected defensively, and he's out. So Middleton has no stress of having to deal with him, and that's who he guarded every minute that he was on the floor with them the last time that they played. So he's going to get a little bit better matchup. And his percentage has not been great. It wasn't against Philly. Philly's team defense is fantastic. You know, they were rated, I think, second in the league at the end of the year to the Lakers with team defensive efficiency or third maybe to Utah. But, uh, you know, you're going to get a little bit different scenario here. You've got an Atlanta team that, you know, throughout the season struggled at times on defense. Now they've gotten a little bit better, but certainly not at the caliber of what they faced with Philly or the Knicks. The bottom line, though, is you could you could check on it. Uh, you know, I think they're going to see a little bit uh, lesser of a defensive force here, similar, you know, similar to what they've had in this previous series, but, you know, not that perimeter defender that, that I think can give him as much trouble as, and being a go-to guy, he generally leads him in minutes played too. I just, I just love him in this series. And you know me, I haven't been a monster Middleton guy this year, uh, but I just think this sets up well for him. I think he could be a difference maker and uh, he's going to be in hundred percent of my lineups tonight. Um, and like I say, the two different builds, I'll get, you know, some of these other guys in there. Now the build with, Giannis and Middleton, where you have to get a little bit uh, experimental, if you will. Uh, I may have to hold my nose and put Tucker in there. There's going to be one guy that I don't want to put in there, but you know, you got to do what you got to do and then just hope he gets that. You know, the last game would suffice for me. He had 11 points, five rebounds, and three steals and two blocks. I'll take that if you if you sold it to me right now. I mean, uh, I if think, I could, I'd sell it and buy it myself. But I don't. Yeah, I think that's the game seven factor for for PJ. Yeah, um, so. I mean it's possible. It's it's certainly possible, and I know it's a risk. But if you're going to try to roster Giannis and Middleton, you got to take a risk, right? I mean, there's just it is what it is. So, um, yeah. So again, I, I'll have that build, and then I'll have the. Uh, Middleton holiday build that where I can have a stronger second group, but I think you, it's going to be a, a, a totally different situation. And I'll jump in there with Middleton because I, I, yeah. I think it does depend a little bit on, on the starting lineup for Atlanta. If Bogdanovich plays, I like Middleton right. a lot more. Okay. If Bogdanovich sits, then they're going to start Solomon Hill or Cam Reddish or even Snell. I don't think they will. I think it'll be Reddish and Hill will get the big bump. And those guys, yeah, are tougher defensively. They are. Um, I mean, they're Snell not gonna... is. Snell is too, man. Yeah, he he's, is. He's a nice defender. He is, but I, I think he, you know, lately Hill's been a little bit in front of him in terms of the rotation. But the point is, if one of those guys starts, then it's a tougher situation for Middleton. Not that they're going to lock him up. And I agree, the volume of shooting is huge. But if right. Bogdanovich starts, we know he's not a hundred percent. He's not a great defender anyway. 
And then they don't have a very good matchup in the starting lineup for Middleton. So right. uh, that'll be the big turning point for me on Middleton. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And if I can get the game straight, we'd probably be better off. But <laughs> I know what I'm thinking. It just isn't coming out correctly. But the bottom line is I think you're going to see uh, increased uh, production. He's already got the usage. It's not like we have to say, okay, Middleton's going to get more shots and more usage. He's gotten a ton. It's just he hasn't shot a good percentage, but I like this matchup better for him. Excellent. Well, we are going to build those lineups throughout the afternoon, wait and yes. uh, incorporate that news that we get with Bogdanovich and Reddish, and finalize some lineups on FanDuel, Yahoo, and DraftKings. For the members, we'd love to have you, DFSCoachTalk.com. If you have any questions, reach out to us on Twitter at DFSCoachTalk. You can follow the coach at J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I. You can find me at Language Olympic. And subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. We'll continue to do these podcasts. Every day we have an NBA slate, which we're in a nice groove now. We're going to go back and forth between East and West. So uh, let's take advantage of it yeah, while we good can. Good stuff. And now I spoke in code today. So if you're confused, then you need to come and jump in our Discord <laughs> so I can straighten it out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, well, let's end it there. On behalf of the coach and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow as we look to crush it in DFS.